All right. So as it stands, it's France and Sweden who are in the top two, and the top two advance yeah. automatically to uh, Switzerland in 2025. Third spot is reserved for a playoff, but obviously. It's a playoff, so it's always a bit nervy going into something like that. They don't have long the Lionesses to dwell on that defeat because they head to St Etienne for the reverse fixture on Tuesday. To give us the lowdown then on what happened at St James's Park, Talk Sports Uma Gurav joins us. Uma, how are you? Uma? I'm good, thank you. How are you both? I've Doing just been good. distracted trying to think about tooth-related footballers <laughs> now, though. <laughs> Stop. Honestly, it's, they're flooding in. I, I don't even know if we're going to be able to keep up with everyone. But um, yeah, well, thank you. Well, the best you. I've got is Ian Brush. Ian Brush. That's a yes. good one. That's a good yes. one. It works. Good, yeah. It works. I love Very it. Good. Um, <laughs> let's just park that for now, if of we can. Course. Because let's talk about what happened. Despite taking yeah. the lead then uh, last night, Uma, they suffered that first loss in qualifying. What went wrong? Explain it to us. I think we've just seen... A lot of sloppiness in that game last night. It was a really frustrating match to watch as a Lionesses fan. I think for the Lionesses as well, they would have found that really frustrating. They're back with what on paper is a really strong team. Eight out of the 11 starters were the team that won Euro 2022. And, you know, you've got people like, for the first time since February 2023, we had our supposedly preferred centre-back pairing, Millie Bright and Leah Williamson, back in the squad and back starting. But actually, I think that was a centre-back pairing that didn't look comfortable at times, particularly Millie Bright. She's been out with, for so long. And England con- conceded twice again off set pieces. It's something they've talked about before, and yet they still sort of haven't managed to shore up. So it leaves them third in their group with mm. it all to do. The French equaliser was amazing, it has to be said. But the second the second mm. goal, Marianne Antoinette Cototo's goal, England really should be defending that better. Yeah. And I think in the end, their inability to defend set pieces cost them mm. again. Mm. Um, it didn't help with Mary Herps getting injured oh. after 40 seconds. And, um, you know, OK, nothing you could do with the two goals you just mentioned that England conceded. Uh, but just it sort of set the tone of the night, didn't it? Yeah. The, you know, and then... You know, you see two set pieces go in the way they did. Mm. Uh, and great finishes, by the way. Yeah, 100%. Full credit to France, who I think in the end were the better team, particularly in the second half. But absolutely, Mary Up's going off so early on. I think it was inside eight minutes. The mental effect of that and seeing her on crutches after the game, that's really hard. But also, obviously, you have Hannah Hampton come in, who is a fully capable goalkeeper. But I think Mm. if you go into the game, and it was her 50th cap as well, which is really hard for her to take at the crowd, you could see were, were gutted for her as well. But whether that affected England at all, they didn't look comfortable, it has to be said, even while she was on the pitch. So giving giving away unnecessary corners, they gave France their best chance of the first half because of a sloppy pass from Millie Bright back, which ended up going out. Mm. So I think they just don't look solid defensively. There was an interesting sort of criticism levelled at Serena Wiegmann. She chose to start four right-footed defenders. She didn't start the very informal Alex Greenwood. And whether that was a mistake, it, I don't know. I think, for me, Greenwood should have started on that. And I think she made the difference. Mm. But, yeah, lots to lots to sort of, I suppose, focus on if you're going on the positives. They now have an opportunity to, to remedy this before Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, just in terms of what's happening with England right now, they can still turn it around, of course. But it's a second successive qualifying tournament that they've been underwhelming in. And obviously I'm talking about the Nations League previously where Team GB's hopes of reaching the Olympics rested on the shoulders of the Lionesses in progressing beyond the group stage. That, of course, didn't happen. So is there a bigger issue at play here with England? I think there is. And part of it has been... something that's been talked about is maybe affecting them is this hangout hangover from the world cup from the euros this mm. really intense campaign that they've had and obviously concern, concerns are being raised about just the sheer number of minutes that these players are having to play they only finished the wsl season obviously a few weeks ago so the rest period has been very very short and for players who are in the olympics obviously that's mm. not team gb this year but this summer is just going to be so intense Leah Williamson came out after the game and said, that's not an excuse. And that is true. Obviously, they're going to have to get used to this kind of campaign, particularly with more competitions being added into the women's football calendar. However, one thing that for me maybe is something that England have to look out is Serena Vegan brought in a lot of young new players into this squad that she's called up and she didn't really use any of them last night. And whether that maybe is something she should be looking at, obviously they lacked Lauren James through injury last night. But Alessia Russo didn't look like scoring at all last night. So should they be bringing in younger players like Aggie Beaver-Jones, who's really impressed at Chelsea, 
Jess Park, who was amazing at Manchester City. I think England have become too reliant on that team that won Euro 2022 and they need to start experimenting, just looking ahead to the future, mm. really. Mm. And my adopted daughter, Cascaway, now in France. She <laughs> played her part. Yes, indeed. My dad asked me about that. He said, is that Tony's daughter? <laughs> everyone does. Everybody. <laughs> when I first came, everyone said, have you got any daughters? Because they're, tw they're twins, aren't they? I think they're tw twin there's sisters. two of them, yeah. Yeah, I think it's two. Mm. I think they're twins. But anyway, um, yeah, I've been asked on it numerous <laughs> times. Even by my children have said, Dad, was you naughty in France? <laughs> <laughs> Can you <laughs> imagine us? <laughs> dad, uh, do you want to tell us something? Uh, yes, um, worrying times perhaps for England, but like we say, not long for them to dwell on that defeat and they've got Tuesday's yeah. game in France to perhaps try and rectify everything. I, I suppose just briefly, Uma, there's no update on Mary Earps. I mean, it doesn't bode well that she was also seen walking off on, on crutches after the game. Yeah, we haven't heard what's what the exact issue is it looks like a muscle injury she was holding her hip mm. serena Beegman said she had to speak to, she would have to speak to the doctor before giving an update but we wish her obviously a speedy recovery hopefully it's nothing too major and i suppose the the good news is that she will have time to recover after tuesday um and hopefully that does her really well brilliant uma thank, thank you. you for being Thanks with us very today much. great to have you with us <laughs> texts and tweets are flooding in <laughs> we've got to do the positions we're doing a team we've got to do a team haven't we i know i mean it's a throwaway yeah. like 11 but oh, yeah i mean you can if you really want um yeah we, i'm sure by the end of the show we can definitely have an 11 picked out um but that is to come we're asking for your uh, footballing teeth 11 because as we heard yesterday on Talksport, cassie's good old mate I don't know if he is your mate now. Uh, Andy Townsend outed him uh, for having had his teeth done. Uh, and they do look lovely, nice and pearly white, but not blinding white, you know what I mean? No. Not, not they're like, whoa, what have you had done? They look good. Good. So, you know. But it's I get your approval then on my teeth. Yeah, you do. You do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I would have been wearing shades, perhaps. <laughs> uh, that's what we want to hear from you this morning, then. 81089 is the text number. You can tweet me. I'm still going to say tweet. I think it's much easier. Uh, at Natalie Sawyer. Loads of you have been doing that, and we'll read them out throughout the show. On the way next, we'll hear a debate on the importance of the Club World Cup after the PFA's threatened strike. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.